Now on this video, I'm going to show a very unique repair to an RZ350 tank. Where the sticker was at the bottom of the tank, there was some damage. Underneath the tank, the bottom, there was some damage. I'm going to show how I used an airbrush to do some of it, how I did the repair of the sticker and getting the surface flat. And because this is a unique, one-of-a-kind repair, you could use this on pretty much any any part of a bike but where this was it allowed us to do this repair very conveniently without having to repaint the whole tank and the, the thing was at the end of it when we were all done and all the buffing was done you could not feel or see or tell where that repair was so the first part of this job is where the damage is the sticker has been pulled away it is glue there it's uneven it's a step down you can see the step down right there and the first job is to get that clean and get it even with a sanding block and that sounds like it's really easy to do but it really isn't cleaning it with prep soil is a real good thing using your fingernail is a good thing instead of a screwdriver or a razor and then a lot a lot of sanding a block sanding wet sanding just getting it down to where you can't even feel it. Now, once you can't feel it, the trick is to put a couple of coats of thin CA on it and block sand them in. So now what you've done is seal this area, the equivalent of seal a primer. And it's the biggest job is before we put the new sticker on, it's gotta be perfectly level, absolutely perfectly level. If it's even a little bit wrong, it, you're gonna see it in the final thing. Now, here we are and putting it the, the sticker on. And this sticker was a little tricky to get on because it has better line up perfect. It's got a stripe at both ends. So by putting it on with a little bit of Windex or whatever water, you can move it around a little bit, get all the bubbles out. And Dale was helping me through this whole process here. But getting that sticker on, now that's only the first part of the job. The second part is gonna be we wanna get clear over it without having a line because I don't want to respray the whole tank. So we got to get a spot on this where it's going to end and get the edges down and get this back mast in such a way that we can get the clear on and move that clear line back a little bit with each coat. So the next step on this was to very carefully back mask the whole tank. Again, leaving that tape about a 64th of an inch up to try to avoid that step where a decal would end and the no decal would begin. And I used the, the tinfoil method that was shared many years ago with us by Walt Prey, the late Walt Prey, custom car guru in California. And that always seems to be a good way to do this. Now the whole idea was to get this back mast. Of course, we're working around some really crappy weather. We're not going to be able to paint today. So I thought today I can get everything back mast, get this all prepped up and ready to go, and then as soon as we do get a day where it's appropriate to paint, I'd pretty much be ready to get some clear on this. And that is the next step on this job. So the next step on this was to wait for an appropriate day. We could be outside spraying clear. The weather was not cooperating during this whole time. And mixing this up, the four to one, five star, with fast hardener. We want to use fast hardener on this. Now the whole idea of putting a clear on <clears throat> it's not a problem of getting the clear on. It's where the clear ends. I don't want to have a step. I want to put some thin coats on, which I'm going to do today. And then I'm going to move the masking tape back just a 64th of an inch, leaving it all just the way you see it here, so that I don't have a, a step. I have a lot of little steps. And in the final buffing, that's going to mean I can bury that and you can't feel it. Now, when this job was finished and we were at one of the meetups, one of Dale's meetups, I went over to show somebody the tank, and, and I couldn't remember which side of the, the tank we had worked on, to be honest. And they were both pretty good. And this worked out. Getting this clear on was a big job today. So after several coats of clear, moving the tape back now, it's got to dry. And now I want to back mask that and leave the bottom of the tank exposed. Now the bottom of the tank had some issues. I wanted to back mask this off again, trying to avoid having a paint step where one ends and the other one doesn't. And there's a lot of, this involved a lot of little touch-ups with a brush and getting that just nice. But back masking this, and now I want to airbrush using an Awada airbrush 
and some touch-up paint. And luckily, I had some touch-up paint that was a close match. Get that bottom airbrushed and get a little bit of clear on it, just enough that we can protect it. And the easiest way to do this is with an airbrush. It doesn't build up a heavy paint line or a paint edge. Because when the job is done, and believe me, this is, this is Dale's pride and joy. And I know he wants this perfect, and this is the only way I know to do it. Now, this is the way I have done this in the past, both on model airplanes and on motorcycles. And uh, back, pulled up enough of the back mask away that I can expose that tape. Now, the, it's the tape that's going to be the edge of the clear. I want to get that off. And then I want to move that back up about a 64th of an inch. Again, what I'm trying to avoid, and it's, it's self-explanatory, I don't want to have a giant edge. I want to minimize the edge so that when I'm done and I buff this out, you want to almost not feel, maybe you'll feel it just a little bit, that edge. And that, that is the secret to not having to paint the whole tank. Now, if we weren't able to do that, and you, or if you were willing to live with that edge there, and I'm not, and I know Dale isn't either. Dale is uh, very critical of his collector bikes, just like I am. And we wanted this one to be perfect. Got the extreme clear right up, right up over the edge. Now, this is always a part of the job that I think requires a lot of patience. Using some heat, a hair dryer or a heat gun, carefully warm up the tape. The paint that we're, we've just put on only the last couple of days is soft. And all of the paint, I don't want to get any of the residue from the aluminum foil on there. And I don't want to take a chance because I don't know at this point in time if this tank has ever been repainted. So I don't know that. So the best way to ensure that you're going to get the tape off without any problem at all, and it is a wonderful tip, get everything nice and warm. Warm tape comes up a lot better than ice cold tape. Tape gets stickier and stickier as you get it cold. Now the thing is 2,000 grit sandpaper, and very, very carefully, I want to kind of blend in the edge, blend in the edge where it goes to the parts of the tank that we have not painted, because that's the whole secret here. The whole thing of doing this job was to avoid having to paint the tank. Now I know Scott has an RZ, and he's got a dent in his tank that he wants to fix, and I think he can use this video, among others, with some good ideas on how to do it, but, and of course, any of the CRC products, I like 8065, but this one is good too. This is a, a very mild polish, not a heavy compound that's going to take off a lot of material. And right now I want to do it very carefully around the edges and bring the, bring the shine back up, which usually comes up very quickly. And again, very clean or brand, even better, brand new microfibers. Not using one that's got, uh, we wiped off a chain with it or something anyway. And getting that now to the point right now where I want to be able to rub my finger on that and I almost can't feel it. Then I can take the big buffer and very, very carefully, and I'm not pressing down hard at all. Because all of the paint, now you don't know Yamaha, among other companies, you never know. Now, my MT-09 seems like it has 20 coats of clear, but I've seen some, some, especially the sport bikes, I think they put one molecule of clear on, and I've gone to buff them out, and right away you see you're, you're at the end of the clear. So, usually Yamaha's pretty good. My R1 was pretty good, and they're usually generous with the clear, and I think most of the companies are, but I wouldn't say it for sure. But you always want to be careful at this point. Now, we've got... The game has been won, and all we have to do is run out the clock here and not make a problem. So I want to be real careful now using that CRC. Any of the CRC compounds are very, very mild. Get this all dressed off, and then I want to protect it. Because what's going to happen when Dale goes to put this back on the bike? You're going to have greasy hands touching it, and you know who knows what else. It's in the car. It's in transportation. I want to get a really good coat. Uh, this is Meguiar's Carnuba Wax, but any of the good waxes, Colonite is good. Any of the good waxes, a real good coat of wax is cheap insurance that you're not going to get it all put back on the bike and then see a scratch or something. And, of course, the top coat, the show car glaze. I know Dale appreciates all this hand labor. 
as any of the people that have these collector bikes know. You just can't go to the store and buy them. You just couldn't go buy that tank. And even if you did, it wouldn't have, it would be in probably rusty inside or have some other problem. So when Dale came to pick this up, I know he gave it his full seal of approval. We did some other parts of the bike while we were doing this. I'll make a separate video out of that so these videos don't get too long and cumbersome. And I put most of this in fast forward. Because you can, you'll, you'll still get the idea of how this job went off. And you can always look at the videos on my channel. <laughs> Just put up RZ350 Restoration. You can look at them in, in real time. But once Dale picked this up, he was one very happy friend. Now at the end of every project, I try to look back over the time I spent doing this. And it always is a labor of love. There's never a time this stuff just goes off in one afternoon. Not doing this level of work and this, this level of craftsmanship. Now, if I were the only one in the world that was riding a motorcycle, it'd be fun and yes. But, but what makes it special for me is having a group of friends I have. Dale is among them. And being able to do them little mitzvah favors from time to time. And they certainly have done favors for me too in the past. But this is the kind of thing that's very, very rewarding. Because these are parts for a motorcycle you just can't go to Partzilla and get. And when you get them off eBay, they're usually in worse shape than what you have. So being able to restore them and bring them back from the edge of the grave and using products that you can buy in an ordinary body shop that are not super expensive and basic technology. This is not rocket science. And at the end of it, being able to polish it and wax it, hand it back to somebody and see that smile on their face, and I know this is just one of the things that, uh, I don't know how to explain that. It's, it's hard for me to explain it. But if you're new to our channel, we try to do riding, we work on bikes, we do mitzvahs for people, we do a lot of polishing, we do some carbon fiber work, and we try to share everything on this little channel that we have. And it's, of course, it's all free, it's all for fun. We're not trying to sell anything. And we love our two strokes. If you love two strokes, well, I love custom wheels. It, this is a very predictable thing. And I love custom paintwork. I've done it my basically my whole life. I love seeing polished engine parts on these older bikes in my collection. I have seven bikes registered, four historic. Most of them have some car, some carbon fiber or some polishing or some custom paint. Several are evil twins. They're two bikes that I make with two sets of bodywork to make one. I try to post a video almost every day. We're busy in the shop all year long. This is my passion. And I almost never have a day that I'm not working in the shop or going for a ride. And I do love to shoot the videos. I do love editing them. Because what that allows me to do is share my life with people. Maybe some that I've never even met. And most of the people do enjoy sharing. They do, they do enjoy seeing some of the little adventures that my family goes through. So thanks, guys, so much for watching. And hopefully we will see you tomorrow and share our channel with your friends.